Hello, this is Bobby at Copel TV Repair with a video that I wanted to make two or three weeks ago, but we were very busy and I didn't do it back then. Uh, but fate has returned those boards back to us for the exact same reason for which I wanted to make that video and I think fate tells me that I gotta make that video. I will try to be as short as I can. I know I tend to talk a lot and especially if you're only watching boards, that's not a lot of fun. But uh, the, the narrative of the video is pretty much you pay what you're getting for Sorry, you get what you're paying for <laughs> and there's a lot of Unquality stuff out there and you gotta know I do understand how hard it is because I was shopping for AC or for car repair every time you need somebody else to do something for you You're basically facing the same situation, but Here's the thing to the point. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we received a request from a common customer, repeat customer that we have good relation with, or a good history, let's say, uh, saying we are just getting a seven blink error code. Um, the board was sent to you for repair back in 2018. It appears to be the same problem. We'll be sending buffers along with the SC board. This is TMPA 5351 and the two buffer boards. And when they arrived, one of the first things that we noticed was that that board was not has not been here two years ago. And there is a number of reasons why we can tell that. The number one, it was missing the white label that we put on everything. This uh, is after we service the buffer board. So every board that we service has one of those labels. Number two, that board did not have a transistor replaced that had to be replaced uh, and by that I mean we always replace them if the board is here no matter what no matter whether they're good or bad and that's because we have seen them fail those are um, sustained creation energy recovery transistors uh, and output voltage regulators and they fail in groups those there's a uh, one compound transistor here made of three and there is one it's probably not the right word. Three in parallel, uh, acting as one. There's one trio here, there's one trio here. Those fail together. If those fail, those fail. If those fail, those fail. But separately from them, there's this group of three, uh, which also fails. And it can fail on its own. And when that fails, sometimes there's other failures here. But if those never fail on the side by themselves. And because we have seen those fail independently and those fail independently and because we have done so many boards that we know that if we fix those then there is a chance that during warranty period those may fail again customer will send the board back they don't know of course what fails then everything is the same it fails it doesn't work it's our fault uh so because we have seen them fail separately it makes sense that they're just wearing out and fail and they don't wear out exactly perfectly but if you drive, I've made this analogy many times, if you are driving a car and your front wheel busts out of wearing, it's so worn that it busts out and you go, are you going to replace just the front um, tire or are you going to replace all four? The right thing to do apparently will be to replace all four because they've been driving together and even if one of them busted first, the rest are coming really soon after. So this is why a quality repair on this requires dust. Uh, so this was clearly not our board. In addition, the way the transistor was soldered and looked at, like this chipped corner here and other chips on the side, this was definitely not our job. Not that it matters critically, but it does. So what was wrong, it turned out with the three boards, was just the lower buffer board had a busted IC, which got replaced. Where is it? And I'm holding the top buffer board. So this is the, the bottom and this is the IC that got replaced and because there was nothing shorted or fail on the board, there is other problems with it. Uh, in addition to those not being replaced that should have been, it wasn't cleaned. And rust that develops on the surface of the contact points, you can see the, the black stuff there rust or whatever it is yeah, but over time it starts arcing it starts arcing between the screw and the board itself and i believe this is one of the 
reasons why that board is failing is because of that rust. So whenever the board comes here, we also clean all those, both top and front and back. And they must be, whoever is selling repair kits for those, a, a repair kit alone is not sufficient for that board. You need to do other stuff to make sure that you're really servicing it right, which is why we're servicing it. Uh, so we came back to the customer and told them the only problem was with the lower buffer. We tested the other three and what we actively said was this. Pretty much what I just told you. Let me, the screen will open, come on. The message is this. No, sorry, that is the second request they sent for the new board. I'm sorry for the delay. Yeah. However, no, all three boards. I'm sorry. It opened the request finally, so this is the message. Just finished processing the board you sent us. The problem was in the lower buffer board only. It had a burned IC, which was now successfully replaced. All three boards were in the set and working together. Your bill is blah, 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 blah. However, I should point out that the SC board is in need of maintenance cleaning to prevent arcing and failure. Also, if it was up to us, we'd replace a set of three FETs. My mistakes. Those are uh, probably not FETs. Uh, but it doesn't matter, the two transistors that were never replaced on the board and which you will likely be the next thing to fail on it. Short of failures caused by the poor contacts and arcing, which may bust the originally replaced transistors as well. Uh, you say in your request that the board was here in 2018, but I can assure you it has not, blah, 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 for the same reason that, that I explained. So the customer was made aware of that, but they chose to go and just have that buffer replaced. What do you know? Uh, as they say in the other message, we sent those three boards a few weeks ago. You ended up changing, I see, blah, 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 blah. Decided to leave it since it was working your test rig. I initially had mistakenly thought we sent you the board before, but we found out that the SI was repaired by someone on eBay. Anyways, we received those boards back on Monday, installed them. Da -da 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 -da. Some ribbon cables were, and they had to be adjusted. And two or three minutes later, the screen went back and seven blinks again. So the boards are back here again. And what I want to show is this. Uh, this is for Geely's TV repair. First, we have a shorted sustain board. The, uh, the ICs, sorry, the ICs that the transistors that were replaced are good. But the ones that were not are shorted. So there is a group of three. Here, they're in Pearl and they will have to be replaced. Possibly this one as well. Okay, this has to be replaced. Possibly this one as well. And because of that, there may be more. So this group goes together. But, unfortunately, in addition to that, this time we also have a bad top buffer board. Oh, come on. Okay, there's somewhere up here. There you go. So, this is also shorted, and this is shorted. That's another so many dollars in repairs. And here's the problem. The problem is that board was not properly serviced the first time when it was serviced by someone on eBay, and that gets me to the point on eBay there is tons of offers for really low money and repairs that are not properly done they're not properly done because let me see where was I looking I don't want to pick on anyone in particular I'm just going by numbers here $70 $70 with free shipping so for $70 somebody's going to repair that board and let's do a really quick math of those $70 
10 to 15 percent, effectively 15 percent, if my accounting is right and I do my own accounting uh, for eBay, PayPal, and it comes effectively to 15 percent after everything you do. So 15 percent of that price go to eBay, PayPal. 15 percent of $70 or $10, roughly $10.50. So $60 revenue from that. Um, $12 shipping. This is a large port. You don't ship that with US USPS is expensive enough. Sometimes you may get a little lower, but sometimes you will get higher. I would say on average, easily above $10. For the sake of computing, I would say $10 again. So from 70 uh, down to 60. From those 60, you gotta take out the parts that you're replacing. I would say make it another 10 because you don't know how that board will come up even if you replace only those or only those uh, let's say six of them one dollar fifty each easy ten dollars but it may be more than that if you do it like we do it all of those all of those sometimes those sometimes little other things but let's say ten dollars and this is underestimate Unless you're really lucky and it's just those three and you just replace those three, which is the wrong thing to do, then you may actually save some money. But on average, it will be a little bit more than that. Uh, we're down to 50, 70, 70, 60, 50. And those, hold on. It starts with 70. We said 10 for PayPal, eBay, 60. Uh, 10 for shipping, 50. 10 for parts, 40. Now, if you are in business to do repairs, you do know that no matter what you do, you're gonna, you're bound to face problems. You're, you're bound to have warranty returns where you miss something, whether the customer screwed up something, customer didn't insert something, customer, you'll have to go and have some expenses, shipping boards back and forth, covering whatever it is. I would say easily you can put another $10 into such things. Don't tell me that you're perfect, those things don't happen. You haven't been in business enough to know that they do. There are problems everywhere because that's the human nature. People will scrap something. People will try to cheat you. People will not know any better. Uh, USPS or whatever carriers will scrap. You gotta have a buffer. Now, whether that buffer is gotta be $10 really depend on the volume, depends on everything. But what I'm getting at is that you can go down to between 30 and $40 to work on that. And then you have to pay, of course, that's not your ideal revenue. Uh, it's getting a little complicated. I'm, I'm operating out of business that I, uh, out of a building that I own and that I'm renting to other people. I pay very low rent for this whole space, but no matter how, you, how low the rent is, you buy parts uh, that this will pay this time, but something else will do the next time, and everything pays out. You do have expenses for running that business, no matter what. Even if you're running it at home, uh, if you're running it at home, you're not gonna have this equipment, you're not gonna have that equipment. Um, you're do a poor job in other, in other areas. You can't do that for 10 or $10, because it takes one full hour to do this properly. You gotta clean those, and that takes time. Scrubbing, cleaning, top and bottom, there's there's a lot of them. Replacing those and testing the whole board takes me between 30 and 60 minutes to do it properly. And my bottom line is, if you are paying 70 freaking dollars with free shipping on eBay, you shouldn't really be expecting to get things properly done. And you don't know that if you're just a regular buyer, but that is an illustration and an explanation of why some things cost more than that. A lot of vendors, I know that for a fact, are fixing boards without actually testing them. This board will definitely go on a TV, uh, we'll definitely see that it does work before we ship it back. And I have a number of those that just fail. There, there is a number of cases that you know, for whatever reason, you keep throwing parts at them in time and you just keep on failing, so you give up. And this also has to be factored in those money that you charge for repairing the boards. If, if you don't do your numbers properly, you're gonna do a lousy job. And this is what the end result looks like. Somebody just replaced those 
you know, replace these. Now, customer has to pay all that. And those people are still up on eBay and doing, I don't want to be naming individual names. It really doesn't make any difference because to someone who knows better than, than me something else, I may appear the same not knowledgeable person. One thing is for sure, there is a lot of underpricing and under quality on eBay. One of the reasons, and everywhere else, I'm sure. One of the reasons I never pick the cheapest, I never pick the most expensive. Now, of course, it doesn't guarantee that somebody doesn't charge you in the mid-range and still do a low-quality job. I guess you'll learn those things over time. That's one of the reasons I'm making this video. I hope it helps. I don't know what Jilly will say. Um, I'm about to send them the report and that video. Best of luck shopping everywhere and don't go for the cheapest. Ask questions, see where people offer videos, see what people say. Again, I, I don't want to pick on anyone in particular on eBay. There's just plenty and plenty of them. $55. I know repairs that are for $39. It really doesn't make sense. Sneak on the high end, $145. I know they will do a good job. That's darn expensive, but it's going to be done well. I know that and um, many others. Uh, $79.95, it was free shipping, I wouldn't buy. $79.95 with not free shipping, our own board, $199 with... Well, is our own listing. So, that is what it is. People cut corners, uh, best of luck. I did speak too much, but hopefully you did learn something. Thanks a lot.